Hey, Make sure my good. DSL connection's running. All right, so guys, it says we are live right now. We'll see what happens on the YouTube side here real quick. And there's five people Wait, waiting. There's a YouTube four side? Watching right now. Oh, yeah, the gun channel side should be up and running. Here we go. Okay, YouTube side's going. Yeah, your there buddy Stan should be out there, too. I don't know what Stan's doing this weekend. I need to get him to come on to one of our chats sometime. He might like that. That'd be cool. Have him join in. Loan him a headset and get him hooked up. Uh, it might be one giant TV commercial, though. No, nah, no, nah, he won't. Like I said, all the guns that I that I use are from. He he doesn't really want to do a um, you know a store video. He just likes to just kind of stay in the background and, and loan me guns, and then I just chat about it. So it works out good. Because he's embarrassed that what the stock he has in his store compared to what he has in his gun safe. Man, I don't know. I don't know. The thing is, he 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 does a lot more of the ordering side of it because it it's just so much easier that way. Less overhead and prices are awesome too. But all right, so guys, we'll go ahead and get started. Looks like we have eight people watching right now, but I don't have anybody um, chatting on the side, so I can't do any shouting out just yet. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, okay. Well, anyway, welcome to Caliber Corner number seven. And yes, I have a different background. I'm at my grandpa, my grandparents' house. Uh, I'm going to be helping him with some internet stuff here in about two hours but uh anyway let's let everybody introduce themselves hey wag you want to say a few things talk about your channel your videos i'm a wag we're going to talk about the end of the world today <laughs> there we go as we know it but we all feel fine all right speed bump no problem hey wag how's that super doing man it's doing great got a brand new clutch in it and it feels fantastic so it does it's running driving no problems mm -hmm. at all um, okay, so you can drive out to Nebraska then? Okay. Uh, <laughs> one little problem. The thermostat is stuck open, so it doesn't get up to temperature ever. Uh, you got to get that fixed before wintertime. Yeah, it's, it's just waiting to grow up and be a Chevy. Uh, <laughs> it should be. It should be. Are you going to get that? You're going to get that taken care of? Because it's only about a $20 part, isn't it? 25 yeah, bucks. I'm probably going to go after the, uh, the live stream. Yeah. Today. All right, sorry, Travis. Oh, cool. I, I actually had a glitch there. Oh. I had to switch my headphones out. My I had I had one pair that wasn't working right. Oh no, that's I'm fine, right. man. That's fine. It's good to. <clears throat> all right, so uh, Midnight Range TM, also known as the other Travis, well, the Travis, right? right? Hey, you want to yourself? You want to talk about what your plans are for for YouTube? Are you working on a channel? Uh, yeah, actually, that's why I switched my name. I wanted something that was a little more appropriate for you know the kind of stuff that I might be doing. I don't have a whole lot of time, and I'm not exactly sure when uh, <laughs> when I'm going to be able to do some stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been known yeah. to shoot late at night. Um, when I get off of work at the restaurant every now and then, I'll, uh, I'll pop into my, my local range. I can shoot 24-7 indoors. So I'll be in there sometimes at midnight, 1 a.m. by myself, which is kind of nice. All right. Um, your local range. Dude, those oh, people yeah. need a plug. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. 24-7 yeah, range. I'm, Man, that's awesome. I'm in Central PA. Uh, it's Harrisburg Hunter and Angler in, uh, in Harrisburg, oh, PA. Oh, yeah, that is. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit – it's been around for a long time. Uh, and their indoor range, you can shoot up to 45 ACP um, as long as the range isn't reserved 24 hours a day. We, we have a key card. You can just go in and do your thing. Yeah, cool. it's really cool. Oh man! So yeah. you don't even have to like you don't have to like check in with anybody at the desk or anything like that. You can just literally go yeah. and shoot. And that. <clears throat> yep. Oh my god, that is perfect. Yeah. That is absolutely yeah, it's, perfect. It's it's a little bit older school, I guess, in that sense that uh, you know you go in. They you know you have to have a uh, you know you have to have some sponsors to be to be members, uh, and then you do have to qualify, quote unquote, to shoot indoors, which is just making sure that you you know you 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 can safely operate a firearm. Exactly, and you're not a total jabronski and you're yeah. just blasting all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the other members are very, uh, I will say they're, they're sticklers for rules. They'll let you know if you're doing something wrong, um, which I don't mind, you know, I think that's actually pretty good to police your own. So yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the other part of the name change was yeah. being a chef, um, uh, cooking late and we're cooking on ranges. We're cooking on grills. So cooking at midnight, oh. cooking it, cooking on the mid on All the right. range at midnight. So, I thought it was kind of fitting. Um, I'm actually, I think one of the first ones I'm going to end up doing is uh, uh, I'm actually just putting a new, I bought a, a pistol light for the first time. I'm actually putting it on a pistol right now. So I bought a stream light for my, for my home pistol. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. So I might throw up a video of that. Yeah. I got a great deal on it. I would like now, to I'm touch on something about the police in our own, because I was at the range a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month. 
and I had a guy come up and start ragging on me because I laid my single action rooters down with the gate open. He said, those actions need to be open. I'm like, dude, they are. That's as open as it gets. Unless <laughs> no one Man, some people, well, yeah, I'll tell you I, what. I will say, you know, there are some, there are some things that they, they do, you know, guys will get a little finicky on. Um, you know, I, I, I went in and shot my, uh, my carry pistol and uh, was done. I loaded it back up with my carry ammo. I put the mag back in and I turned around with it in my hand and, and the guy, you know, was like, hey, you, you can't have a loaded mag in that if you're not on the line. And I was like, okay, let's, you know, it's not chambered. I turned back around, put it in the holster. I put it in my gun box, my, my range box, and then I walked out. But I'd rather them say something <clears> than <throat> not, I guess, in the long run. Um, if it's something that's uh, a little particular and you don't really necessarily think it's an issue and they do, I, I guess that's erring on the side of safety. So I'll go along with it. You know, you know, that's one of the reasons why I go to a private range, why I pay is because I want that feeling of security and, and knowing that the people around me might have a little more of a sense of gun safety versus a big open range that's open to the public where people are going to go out there and just do whatever they feel like, you know, and not, not practice good gun safety. So it is sometimes it's good to get those reminders. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's not, you know, I think every, everything yeah. that, that is, can be an issue should be addressed, uh, you know, in a proper way. I, I, think, I, you know. I agree with yeah. that, but please know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Cool, man. All right. Well, Hey, thanks for joining us. And like you said, if you got to duck out and come back however you need to, that's cool. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, um, sure. All right. So, uh, Night Strike, you wanna you wanna go ahead and plug any uh, any awesome uh, shows or your channel? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Think about cheaper than dirt because he's not, he doesn't shop there anymore. So, <laughs> shut up. Uh -huh. shut you don't shop there anymore. It's cool. Hey, we've all bought stuff from there before to sit there and act like we haven't. We've no, we haven't. So. Not all of us. Anyways, Travis on the side chat. I found your new Glock. Yeah. Gen three. Uh, I don't know, man. I like the feel look, of the Gen 4. Look at the, the price, handle. though. Okay, okay. You might sell me on this one. Let me get that. Uh, this, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully it doesn't freeze up my internet connection. As you can see, guys, I'm not in my usual spot. So, Night Strike, you want to make any plugs at all? Uh, Yeah, don't miss hit or miss Tuesday nights, 9 o'clock. There we go. There's Gen nothing 3. else to plug. I see that, Night Strike. That looks pretty cool, man. Hey, there's Grandpa. <laughs> All right, uh, Squib, welcome, man. You said you're going to be able to make it. What's going on, man? Uh, yeah, I'm only able to make it because I'm running late. So uh, I'm actually broadcasting from home instead of from the road. I may be uh, muted and, and duck in and duck out. So still uh, packing up and things like that. Cool, cool. No problems. Where are you I'm going? I'm being supervised. That's my grandpa right here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me it's on the internet. <laughs> you're on the internet right now, Grandpa. You're you're actually being archived right now as we speak, so you are live. The whole world can see you. So, all right, you're <laughs> you're, you're amazing grace. All right, <laughs> that's awesome. We'll watch this one later on, okay? Um, yeah, say hi to your Grandpa for us, man. Hey, I will, man. I will. Ex veteran, man. Ex vet. Awesome. There we go. Awesome. Mine was too. Heck yeah, man. I miss him every day. Oh yeah. How do you put my fellow Grandpa? What's that? Oh, tell him from a fellow grandpa. Hi, from a fellow grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he'll be back several times. He's he's curious about this. So I was trying to explain it to him last night, how a podcast works. And he's like, well, well, can I watch? I'm like, well, yeah, but you won't hear anything so I'll have a headset on. So I need to get him yeah, on this one too. <laughs> I was going to say, you need, you, need to get him a, you need to get a splitter for your uh, for your, head, your headphones so he can just he can just tag onto yours. He can tell us some stories about basic training. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Awesome. Was, he, was he Army, Navy, or Marine? He was Army. Army. Uh, drafted okay. actually back in the back in the fifties. My my grandpa was a marine. He was on Guadalcanal. Actually. Oh, back in the fifties, oh. that would mean he's he's pretty young. I mean, he's still fairly young because I like I said, my parents are, are young too. So I don't. Uh, no, you said I, got, I have fairly young parents. I believe so. Was fifty? Well, how late was the draft going on until? No, was he? Yeah, I think he got. It wouldn't have been the sixties. It would have been the fifties. Do we think, have a draft uh, in the fifties? The, 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 the last draft 70s. was Vietnam. I'd say mid seventies. 
Yeah. The last draft was when Vietnam. Did, when did we start, though? Uh, 1942. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got – he was – Say fifty three is when he was is when he was drafted. Hey, I know this is a little off topic. Yeah, I, I want to jump in just because you're talking about it right now. Mm-hmm. My my grandpa and I never he passed away in 05. and we had probably the most he was the most important person in my life. He always was, and he probably always will be. He's very you know special to me. And one thing that I didn't talk to him about was his service, really. Um, and it was because I'm sure there was a lot of uncomfortable. You know, I mean, not not every vet is willing to talk about it. Yeah. And I never pushed him on it, and he never brought it up. And we were together probably, I mean, every day while I was growing up. We were very close. And after his passing, it's one thing that I – now that I'm older and I'm into guns and, you know what I mean, you're into, you know, like we're pr- talking about prepping today and you're into this and you're into that and you start – I'm not military, but the one thing that I wish I did was talk to him about it. And – see it you know to to learn more and to understand you know what he went through and all that travis while you yeah. have your grandpa if he's willing to sit down and talk to him about it he, i'm i i wish i would yeah. have oh yeah you know? oh he's told me stories about basic and and, and stories yeah. about uh being stationed over in europe and uh just the thing they had to do and and the, with the firearms and now oh, it's my grandfather was drafted for the korean war granted he didn't go over and fight but the issue is, he stayed behind in California and did uh, <laughs> did he was he did supply. So he made sure all those supplies that need to go over to there got there. Please yeah. realize that when you approach yeah. your grandparents or your fellow persons of your family about this, that sometimes people do things in war that they do not want to discuss. Absolutely, right. and that's and that's yeah. exactly why. I, when I was young, I was afraid to, to bring it up. I thought, oh, God, I don't want him to get upset. And I know he was through a lot. He lost one of his best friends um, in the war. And it was, you know, whenever he had brought it up or, you know, or, or it came up, it was, it was, it was tough. So I never, yeah. I, never, I never pushed it. We always, it was always, for me, it was hunting and fishing and going to our camp and doing all the fun things together. And then as, as I got older and, and after he passed away, I thought, man, that's a whole section of his life that I don't know anything about that, you know, maybe he would have been willing to, to talk to me about. And I would have been, I would ha- be so much richer, you know, for it, you know? So if they don't want to talk about it, they don't want to talk about it. You know, if they do, it's a section of somebody's life that you're missing out on, you know? Yeah. Some vets uh, <clears throat> don't talk about it because they had a negative experience. And I don't mean combat. I right. mean, uh, they were in for a short time. They were drafted against their will, whatever it is. They didn't do anything that they consider exciting. They, they, maybe they didn't deploy overseas, whatever it is. They're just, you know, they did what they had to do and they got out and they, they don't, you know, they don't have the bumper sticker or the license plate or, or t- and it's not anything bad. It's just, okay. Uh, it was a job for two years or it was a job for four years or something. I mean, yeah. it, they, they're, they're not anti-military, but they're not. Yeah. You know, so don't always take that they don't say something as they're hiding some secret from combat. Just some guys just don't don't have a positive experience while they're in. And if it is something where they they did see something that I mean, you can have a training accident stateside where your best friend dies and it could traumatize you. People always think, oh, it's just combat, just combat. No, there are lots of guys that die in training and things like that. And there's there's all kinds of stuff that goes on. But. Uh, if they don't want to talk about it, if they clam up, leave them be. But if they don't outwardly, you know, just grab everybody they can, they're, they're not like, okay, there's a joke in Michigan. How do you know somebody went to U of M? Oh, they'll tell you within the first 30 seconds. And that's actually true. They people, <laughs> they, they wear uh, the stuff. They've got it all over their office, all over the car, all over their house. And if you introduce them, if you meet somebody for the first time, they will usually within the first five minutes tell you, oh, and by the way, I'm a graduate of U of M. Okay, not all veterans are like that. And and it, it, it just it, it might be because of a traumatic <clears throat> experience or might just be because of negative experience and, and nothing bad happened. Well, the, yeah. the way my grandfather described it, he was he was proud of uh, being able to serve you know the country and whatnot. He was a uh, first generation Italian American, and uh, you know he's the first generation of our of our family to serve in the United States military. So, I, even his grandfather was uh, even his father was proud of him 
for serving in the military. Yeah. So he didn't do so. anything glorified. So he didn't have paraffin. Any, I don't remember ever seeing any army, army paraphernalia around his house at all. Maybe just a picture <clears throat> of him once, but that was it. Yeah, my grandpa's bag was stolen on his way home. Basically, all he came home with was what he was wearing. Well, not everybody, not everybody keeps their stuff. I mean, if you ask Heavy B, he got rid of all of his stuff, and he's he's not ashamed of his service and 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 that sort of thing. Just some guys get. My best friend, we went in the same time, and uh, I think he might have one one thing. I saved everything. I mean, I've I've got. I think I've got my meal card, my Humvee license. I mean, I've got every piece of paper, every uniform item, all my flight gear, everything, even though I don't fit in it anymore. And so some people save this stuff and some people don't, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you had a bad time or that you don't like the military. It just, you know, when you're younger, you just don't think about that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I wish, some people uh, just don't accumulate stuff. I mean, you know, I'm not one to collect memories. That That's true. Heavy B has said before he does travel light, so... He yeah. that that may just be just because of his nature, but I know that some people just they get rid of they get rid of their stuff and and that's that. But I mean, I wouldn't think anything negative of it. Everybody's just just different. Yeah, I I'm a stuff collector. <laughs> it's all right, man. That's all right. Yeah, my grandpa was issued a Thompson, by the way, too, which is pretty cool. Oh, that was nice. I'd, uh, I'd love to love to play with that thing now. I still think that the military are to permanently issue the weapon to the soldier. And when you get in, you get your sidearm and your uh, battle rifle. That's yours forever. I get asked that Isn't constantly. It? People think that when you leave the Marine Corps, you take your M16 yeah. with you. And I don't know how many people have asked me, do you have your M16? It's like, no, I don't have my M16. Well, they don't give those out. I mean, this isn't Switzerland. Uh Actually, I wish, it, I wish it was. Well, no, they keep it, but uh, in a way, yeah, yeah. I would have said, you know, uh, I'll take the M60 home, but no, they can keep the M16. But uh, it's not, it's not that it's a bad rifle. It's just, uh, well, I guess I just leave it on semi. Don't use it on burst, and it's just fine. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can't believe how many people think they also think that if you do four years in the in the service, that you get a ID card for life, and you can go on any military base for the rest of your life with the same benefits <clears throat> as a retiree with twenty or thirty years. And that's not the case. You've got to you've got to be a retiree to get those benefits. And, and there's there's a lot of misconceptions. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, we need to have a talk on that. <laughs> my daughter's in supply in the Army Reserve, and I'm like, they're starting to switch over from because the reserve gets all the old stuff. So they're starting to switch over now from the M16s to the M4. I'm like, when they start clearing them out, you know, dad wants a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Tony, speaking of which, uh, or Tony, now that we're down to you, Tony, you want to go ahead and give us a, a plug for any programs that you do on gun channels or on YouTube? You want to uh, go ahead? Early watch whenever you can manage to find us on. Or the, what the hell does Sean call that thing? Good morning. Good morning, gun, gun channels. Channel. Good yeah, morning, gun. That's awesome, Tony. You're you are on the two best shows on gun channels. Good morning, gun America. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that should, should tell you what role I play. <laughs> um, uh, Wait, the, you, uh, you play watch. a role? I thought your role was just being the angry old man in the chats. <laughs> no, he's the voice uh, of reason. Yes. <laughs> oh man. All right, guys. So well, let's go ahead and get started here. Today, the discussion is going to be on just the basics of prepping. And I got to be honest, the reason why this topic, I've been thinking about it for a while, but Matt over Never Enough Ammo did a, did a shout out or just a video um, asking, ta talking about his prepper story, telling his story about how he got in prepping and what it was. And he told a really cool story about his grandmother. You know, you would never think, right? But after seeing what she went through in her lifetime, and then at the end, he wanted some, he had asked for some video responses from viewers on what it was that got them into prepping. And I, I immediately did a response video because I haven't really been into it. I mean, the last two years, about a year before the election is when I really started taking, amassing my collection of prepping supplies seriously. We're not talking firearms necessarily we're going to be focusing on you know food water medical supplies and so i did that video and i thought you know what let's just see what what you guys do because we all have different ways and different reasons why we prep and we all have different sources we go to so what i wanted to start off with is just share 
just briefly kind of what your philosophy is about prepping and what you do if you do. And if you don't, that's fine. It's not a problem. We're here to talk about it today. Uh, AWAG, let's start off with you. What is your philosophy on prepping? Do you prep at all? Uh, food, water? With with prepping, um, I see it as I try to be as practical as, pro as possible. When I <laughs> think of something where to go wrong, um, I would probably okay. think about, hey, I'm traveling pretty much two hours every day to work, to and from work. What happens if my car breaks down and I have to end up, you know, either calling somebody or um, basically just sitting on the side of a road for hours on end? And what I prep for that is I'll have like a few snacks in my car that are not, um, that they don't go bad. And I'll have a few quarts of oil and a bunch of other stuff for the car's survivability because I don't want to end up changing a uh, an engine out in the middle of a highway. But um, okay. I, I I don't really prep that much for like end of days <laughs> like apocalypse, if you will. Uh, occasionally we do get power outages out where I live, so I do have a stock, a small stockpile of food, probably about three or four days worth, uh, because that's that's the extent of how long it takes for us to get power back on. Worst comes to worst, I go out in my backyard and I got a huge ass garden. Excuse my language, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, man. Um, so what what kind of natural disasters do you have to worry about where you're at on the East Coast? What, what can you run into? Flooding, uh, um, rain from hurricanes, what? What do you guys, nor'easters? Yeah. And occasional snowstorms and maybe like a really harsh rainstorm. But that's pretty much the extent of it. Okay. From what I've seen in my lifetime. Ice? Is ice ever an issue? Because that can knock power out for days and you're stuck in uh, freezing temperatures. Is ice really an issue where you're at? Ice, ice storms at all. Too are. bad of an issue. It's usually ice sits on the ground for like about. 10 hours maybe and then it melts away within okay. half hour maybe well, when you got the oceans are going to be kind of moderated the climate and the temperatures and stuff too yeah yeah cool uh minute range tm you want to share with us if you're if you're out there if you're listening right now uh what's what's your philosophy on prepping what, what do you do hey let me let me jump back in here i'm, I'm running around a little mm -hmm. bit I'll, I'll let you know when i got a minute yeah Okay. Thanks. Buddy. That's fine. Uh, nice. No problem, man. Uh, nice strike. What would you say? What is your philosophy on prepping? What do you do? <clears throat> and silence to prove my point that he doesn't. Pay <laughs> I was going to give him a few seconds in case he needed it. That's okay. We can come back to him. Squib, what would you say? What's what's your philosophy on prepping? What do you do? Okay. So when I was a kid, I remember learning about these people called <clears throat> survivalists. And I thought that was really cool. I thought they were a little bit nutty, but I thought it was kind of cool. Today, the people that are called, and, and I used to think that preppers today are just another, they were they're survivalists, they just changed the term. But I don't think so. I think the survivalists back in the 80s were people that thought that Russia was going to invade us or there was going to be a nuclear war or there was going to be anarchy in the streets or something like that. And they were prepared in more of a militant way uh, I mean, survival skills, first aid, communications, all the, you know, uh, mechanical and all, all the the things that, that, that preppers do today or some preppers do today. But today, I think prepping is more about the practicality of it. I think it is about natural disasters. And Matt brought up a great point in his little video. What, what's the thing he one of the things he preps for losing his job? I mean, oh, yeah. that's practical. So having skills that some people would call survival skills or or that sort of thing, um, it, I think is more along the lines of, of preppers today than this militant thing that was back in the survivalist era. So those two set apart, uh, as far as what I do for prepping, it's all the stuff I learned as a kid and we didn't, we weren't part of one of these survivalist groups or, or, uh, you know, uh, we weren't uh, anti-government or, or, you know, uh, uh, they're coming for us or whatever. Uh, we yeah. were a little bit worried about nuclear war back in the 80s, but um, uh, 
you know, it was all the things that I learned on how to stretch a dollar. It was all the things I learned about what to do when the power goes out because a hurricane hits and, you know, you've got no power so you don't have a well pump or something like that. It was all the things I learned about uh, just, you know, going out in the woods with my buddies and, and picking up survival skills and, and things like that. And uh, I just still apply some of that stuff today. I mean, I picked up some more in the military, obviously, and, and that sort of thing. I don't, I don't, necessarily subscribe to the whole bugging out thing where I live there aren't a lot of natural disasters and I, I really couldn't bug out very far uh, the roads would be clogged and you know I talked to some people and they're talking about throwing everything on their back and and you know camping out in the woods somewhere and I'm thinking it, it, camping out in the woods it's somebody's property so I'm gonna get shot <laughs> yeah plus there's the other people I mean there's so many elements that could make that not a pleasant experience right. rather I think I think that prepping in in the sense uh, what you see on TV or what some people think of might be more practical for me if I did have some property in the country and one day I would like to but it's the main reason isn't so that I could be a better prepper it's really just because I like country living and and that sort of thing but um, uh, prepping in the city prepping in an apartment prepping in a condo in Hawaii HVS I'm talking to you is not practical but it's not impossible and just having things like first aid skills or knowing some mechanics some basic mechanics or or you know how how to siphon gas or yeah. or things like that and and some people look at that as oh man you're so skilled and i'm thinking no everybody knows this but apparently no not everybody knows how to dress a field uh, do a field dressing uh, on, on a bandage or not everybody knows uh you know maybe uh uh not necessarily to just stick your face in the in the creek and drink right out of there because it's contaminated or you know that sort of thing or uh, not everybody knows I, I, I don't know. I, there's just so many basic things that some people might consider a prepping skill, but I would just consider it an average everyday. Why didn't you learn this when you were a kid skill? Yeah, that's true. It's true. Um, All right. I, got, I might have a couple oh, of minutes here. All right. TM, go ahead, man. Um, so you're talking about why, why did I start doing kind of stuff? Your, your philosophy on prepping and what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the ability to do anything major right now. I'd say some long-term food, um, non-spoiling food is probably what I want to do next. Um, like from wise, like the wise company or, or something like that yep. for me, I, I am on the East coast and I did, I didn't do a video, um, uh, on Matt's video, but I did do a comment and, yep. um, you know, for me, we had a year, I think it was the year Sandy hit. Um, <clears throat> and I'm in central PA. So you think eh, it's not so bad. But um, there are a lot of rivers and creeks and streams and stuff. And it was a mess around where I was, or am. Um, within about an eight-month period, I think it was right around Sandy, we had Sandy hit, which flooded everything. The river was, like, as high as it was um, almost in Agnes back in 72, which was, like, devastating. Um, and then uh, we had a tornado hit not far away from me which is kind of weird for central PA. And then we had a huge, really bad storm that year, winter storm that year, two like back to back within, we got like 12 inches or 13 inches. And two days later we got another 15 or something. It was nuts. And then <clears throat> within that same eight month period, I was sitting in my house doing some laundry, folding laundry in my bed. And I felt this shake. It was an earthquake that oh was centered God. in, I think, I think Reading well, PA It was centered in, which isn't all that far away from us. <clears throat> and, uh, I was like, holy shit, this is like every natural disaster you can think about in the middle of PA. This is crazy. <laughs> Buddy, that's yeah, that knocking on your door telling you to get the hell out of there. That sounds like Nebraska yeah. weather. For yeah. a second, I was like, it we was, haven't, we've had little tremors, but man, nothing like that, you know? It wasn't major. It was, it was small, but it was like, yeah. I thought my name, I thought we live in a townhouse and I thought my neighbor's moving a couch around or something. What the hell's going on? And, uh, you know, then like ten, five minutes later, it, it push notification on my phone that there was a, an earthquake that was close enough for me to feel. So that was one of those, I was like, well, holy hell, if, if you know, it can happen anywhere, you know? So yeah, you start, you start thinking about it and you start, you know, gathering tidbits up and little this and little that. Um, I don't have any huge, a major, amazing plans, you know, but um, it's just that kind of thing. Like we're all kind of talking about right now, like the beginnings of it and the what ifs. So, you know, you, you, you put some stuff in the garage and, you know, you do it a little bit at a time if you can. And, and money is a big deal with it. You know, I understand that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is a it almost turns into a hobby, which is kind of neat because it's a hobby that it's kind of like guns. I mean, if guns are your hobby, 
guns don't go bad. I mean, unless you're, you know, a real asshole. But <laughs> well, unless you buy a Sky CPX two, they're just naturally bad out of the box. But you know, yeah, and, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> say that. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, and you sell you working Jimenez. Hey, the men is the men is ran just fine. <clears throat> bro, I got a J, I got a Jennings J twenty two that's got your name on it, man. <laughs> I've, I've got one actually. You know what? The funny thing about the I got a J twenty two that is my uh, carry when I go walk the dog because it fits in my I, little fanny pack. I, I got uh, my, CCI in it. So my yeah. yep, my my grandpa bought it back in the day for a little snake gun for fishing and stuff. And that that damn thing is just a nightmare, yep. man. It it they slam do. fires it. <laughs> Oh no! Never mind. Oh, mine's been mine's been good. Yeah. yeah, last time I took it out to the range, I, I yeah, it. Uh, I don't know what the hell's going Oof. on with it. I I took it apart. I can't figure it out. So it just sits in the safe for sentimental value now. You know, I might throw. I could well, throw it at somebody if something happens bad. You know, maybe. <laughs> but it is pretty dense. You know, but <clears throat> yeah, it's um, it's that's that's kind of how I got started. You know, and where you know I, I'm a I'm a pretty pretty firm believer too of the. The bugging out thing is, is people talk about it like crazy. Oh, I'd get out of here. I'd go there. I'd go here. The chances if the shit really gets ugly of you being able to pack up all the stuff you need and go on your little voyage is not necessarily all that likely. You know, That's... you're, you're bugging in, man. That's what I'm, I'm planning to sit in my damn house, eat snacks and hopefully wait it out, you know? That's the question I always ask HBS, man. How are you going to carry all that shit when you leave? Yep. yep. And and the other thing, too, is if you don't have a lo location that, that's feasible to bug in at, then maybe you need a location to go to that's already got everything set up. And really, you just whatever you can carry is what you what you take with you when you get to that location. And that may not be feasible because it's expensive and you've got to maintain it. You've got to check in on stuff like that. But that may be uh, a better option. But uh, I like the way you called it a hobby because that's what it is. And for the yeah. people that think preppers are nut jobs, there are people that like the ones on the on some of the TV episodes of Doomsday Preppers. Those people, some of those people were a little nutty. Some of them weren't. Some of them were just trying to promote their business. Uh, but uh, uh it, for anybody who thinks their preppers are nut job, I don't really think all preppers are nut jobs. I don't even think most preppers are nut jobs. I think it is a harmless hobby. It generates revenue for companies. It teaches people skills. It gets them outside. It gets them doing stuff. It gets them maybe paying more attention to ma maintaining stuff around their house or maintaining their skills. Or they may learn, you know, CPR, which they never knew before. And then it, you never know. Somebody could collapse in the Bass Pro Shop and you're right there or whatever it is. It's a harmless, practical hobby. If you ever have to yep. use it, it's good that you have it. Hopefully, you never have to use it. But for the people that think that preppers are nut jobs, it's harmless. Well, yeah. I think too that something that goes along with that too is when I was younger, you know, and you, you, you learn a little bit as you're older that you do what the hell you want to do, and you're your own boss, and you know who cares what everybody else thinks. But you know, there's sometimes there is a little stigma about it that like, yeah, it's a little weird, or oh, what's what's this guy's problem? Is he like some kind of like doomsday kook? Or whatever, and you know, or you know, you'll hear people saying, "Mentioning, oh, why would people do that? That's so weird," you know. And it, it does kind of hold you back. It did me a little bit. I was like, "Yeah, maybe that is a little weird, or maybe that is a little, you know, kooky or goofy." Well, the thing you know. is, though, it, it surprises me how many people know how uh, so little. People yeah. are interested more in social media or what's on their TV show or whatever, and they don't know how to like, stitch stitch a, a, a hole in their shirt or how to change a tire or how to jumpstart a car or how to boil water or something. I cannot believe how clueless so many people are. And these oh, yeah. are real basic, no-brainer kind of skills. That's, that's what I was saying earlier. How does somebody not know some of this stuff? I'm not talking about, you know, necessarily how to skin a deer or how to distill water or whatnot but i mean there's just some basics and so many people are just they're more interested in their the fashion or that sort of thing and that's those are the kind of people that probably look at you and say why would you even do this well you know i, I, I hate to quote a movie but it, it kind of rings true remember what they said in men in black a person is smart people are stupid that brings to the point the most important prepping you can possibly do and that's arm yourself with knowledge hmm. it's true you know you yeah, can have so. you can have yeah. everything in the world but if you don't have the right the right knowledge then you know it's useless um 
Tony, uh, we were going to ask you on this one. What What is your philosophy on prepping, and, and what do you do? Uh, food, food, and water wise. Do you have any food and water stocks that you built up at all? Not in a prepping fashion, but we generally have six weeks worth of food here all the time. Uh, yeah. Plus, we do a garden. I'm going to start with some dried goods, but I have got to just get off my backside and do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it does take time to kind of figure out how you want to do And we were going to get into this a little bit later on, uh, talking about the storage aspect of it, your different options. Um, there's two things for me that got me thinking that I need to do something to have some basic supplies. Uh, the first one, well, 9-11 is what changed my mentality about arming myself before. I wasn't a FUD, but my, mil my arms collection was basically for hunting purposes and one pistol. After watching terrorist attacks, the fear of that, that started getting me thinking about upping my firearms collection, have a little more flexibility in what I have. But for me, the food and water part came from watching uh, footage of Katrina back in 05. I was basically glued to the news 24 seven and I'm watching this wonderful country that we live in. And we have all these supplies we had, even in 05, you know, we have all this technology, we have the military and we have the government and people were dying in the streets of Louisiana because they couldn't get a bottle of water. You know, I mean, I'm sitting there watching and, that thinking, wow, hold I mean, on. They're, they're, they're killing each other, you know. Hold on. We have to yeah. also mention this because it happened in New Orleans. And they were taking their guns and either destroying them or not giving them back. Something that I want to point out is you have to realistically figure out what you're prepping, if you're going to use that term, for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, not, what, what, what's most likely where you live? You're yep. not going to run into the scenarios that most of the prepper channels touch on it's not going to be an end of the world thing it's going to be a regional or local thing that you're dealing with most yeah. likely yeah that and, um and, and, and luckily it will it will pass it will pass you by well not pass you by it will pass after a certain amount of time but you have to prep for what happens during when it happens and and I suppose the real math. point to prepping for something like that is to be able to keep your head down while the melee of insanity goes on yeah well and you just know, having can... stuff that you need to get by when the electricity goes off and the AC is not working and it's 100 degrees outside and humid and your faucet doesn't work you know, I mean, we could talk about where to get water, but just the basics, you know, after seeing that, I thought to myself, okay, I need a little supply of something around the house. Now, I'm not in the same environment that they're in in New Orleans. What it was for me that really got me going too was out here in Nebraska. We have extremes in weather. Uh, we're in the north central part of Tornado Alley. And I have literally seen two towns within the last 15 years in Nebraska just get completely obliterated. Completely, the, the entire town, gone, gone. Thank God people have basements here, and they, they can go underground, and, and there was only, I think, one or two fatalities in those two towns. But, uh, you know, if you have, for me, it was prepping for natural disasters, tornadoes, ice storms, snowstorms, no electricity. Um, because after seeing my, that, it takes days for people to get in there. My grandma's house, 12 blocks away from me, and a number of other houses around her were just wiped off the face of the earth by a tornado here just a couple years ago. We're in Tornado yeah. Alley, too. And and even then, you got to worry about the power going out. You know, how are you going to make dinner? How, what are you going to do for your fridge? After three or four, or after two or three days, your fridge is done. If you don't have a generator to keep it going, you're going to lose everything in your refrigerator. Um, and that's one thing that drives me nuts about my friends. They have no food stocks. None of my friends are really firearms people, except for one. And all they have for food is what's in their pantry, and they got two kids. Something. So you can go a couple weeks or a week. What if whatever you know i mean you gotta you gotta plan ahead for that and it just drives me nuts because a few people over here have been making uh, comments over on the youtube side saying yeah I, I mentioned that i do some prepping and then people immediately start having these negative connotations about you like you're uh you're a koresh that you've got thousands of rounds of ammo or millions of rounds of ammo and rifles and stocks for years and this and that and no it's just being practical for when bad things happen that's what i don't understand people don't get yeah be nuts about it that's why i usually don't talk about it say at work or around other people because they'll be like oh you're what are you living underground in a little bunker you know no no there's, you know you know what probably they a say lot that. of things you can't talk about at work travis no. if, if, no, if, if, if they say that yeah. you need to say yes i do live in a bunker 
Yes, I have a lot of that stuff. Is that a problem? You know, make them uncomfortable instead of have them making you uncomfortable for saying that shit. Or just say, let me ask you a question. What are you going to do if you don't have electricity for more than two days? Do you have a way to make a meal? Because you can't go to the store and buy stuff because, you know, after right. three or four days without electricity, people are going to start getting really weird and you might not want to leave the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, that's, that's I mean, the thing, you know, that you know, kind of kind of goes back to what I'm saying about staying in the house. Like, I think um, most people, a lot of guys that are into guns and stuff are just stockpile ammo like crazy. How long do you, I mean, what the hell are you doing that you, you think 5,000 rounds of, of 7.62 is more important than three cases of gallon jugs of water? You know, I, I understand stockpiling ammo for costs and, and for whatever. And I think that's awesome. I got, you know, I got what I got. But <clears throat> when it comes down to it, I've got, you know, I think three cases of six gallon jugs of water in my garage. That's enough water for us for a little while. You so know, just for NATO is pretty expensive you know. these days. No. <laughs> I have a heat pump well here. So water is not. That's the way. Yeah, that's that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Water's yeah. going to be the main one. Um, And if you want to. Just for a little laugh, just uh, go to your local Walmart uh, the night before there's a major winter storm announcement or before there might be a hurricane coming. Look, look what happens to the store 24 to 48 hours before a store gets hit, before that that's, town gets hit. It. Lots of people wait to the last minute for everything. It's not just prepping. It's everything. Yeah. And they buy stupid stuff. They buy bread milk because we know milk is going to keep when you don't have electricity. Well, how many people aren't willing to eat food out of a bag? How many people aren't willing to open up a cold can of beans with a P38, right? And just take a, a, a plastic spoon and wolf them down and call that a meal. There are lots of people like, oh, I can't eat food if it's not heated. Oh, I can't eat food if it's not prepared, even though, you know, canned beans are cooked. They're safe to eat, stuff like, oh, I can't eat this. This tastes awful. Put a little salt on it. Put a little Tabasco on it. Put, put, put something yeah. on it, you know. But there are people that, that, that don't they, – they, they'll go hungry in, in a situation where they, they won't – you know, they don't have access to cooked food. They don't have access to McDonald's. Has no yeah. one cooked beans beans over a campfire before? <laughs> Don't none of you people know what a propane stove is? Yep. Uh, Seriously. That's, that's there are the first things people I bought. who have no clue. Yeah. Or a little cans of Sterno, a couple cans of Sterno just to heat up something. Well, you know? I, mean, I would I, recommend a Sterno to somebody who's not experienced because it is dangerous as heck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, real uh, quick, guys, I have my... Much, go ahead, Tony. A propane stove is much safer. Uh, real quick, we have I have my very first super chat ever. They just popped up on the YouTube side. They gave you five bucks and... to turn your channel off. <laughs> Man, that's oh. no, no, oh. no more. Hey. <laughs> Bye, guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I, I'll oh, give you garage a guns. Garage guns on the YouTube side points out something really important that we haven't really got to yet. Um, he gave me a little super chat, and he just recently subbed to my channel. I think maybe this morning or yesterday. He, he's, um, he's actually here in South Carolina. Cool, cool. Now, as I've been reading his comments, he said, I just got a roof-mounted solar kit installed that completely eliminated my electric bill, and I don't have to worry about power outages. So that's another one to consider, too, is electricity. Do you have a generator, anything you can use? I know I did a little generator video about six months ago just saying, hey, do you have one? You know, do you need one? Would it be safe to have one on your property? You know, is anybody going to come pill for that? But that's a good point. You know, with, with the technology out there, Tesla's got solar shingles now that you can put up. Uh, I know there's people that that sell electricity back to their utility companies because they generate more than they use. Some so uh, the about, solar kit yeah. about that um, in New Jersey, from what I've seen is the solar companies will not sell you more solar panels than it your basically your electric bill. Your um, have the electric company pay you, which is really kind of sad because. My parents wanted to put up um, Ray on the on our roof, but he wanted to have like completely the whole nine yards. He didn't want to have any electric bill, and he wanted to get paid to do it. So he called, uh, I think it was like Solar City, which is uh, basically Tesla's Tesla's solar panel company, um, and they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it at all. So, I mean, well, you know. Yeah. God forbid they start generating more electricity than they need and they want to start selling it to, say, a community utilities company that's all about that, you know, and put the put the main utility out of business. Uh, our utility yeah. company will not buy it. Yeah. They won't pay you. They'll, they'll uh, 
credit your account. Yeah. But you never will get a check from them, so that's yeah. not a not a possibility here. Thank yep. you, Cameron. Man. Well, okay, we all shared our philosophies on what we do to prep. We all have kind of different approaches and stuff. Uh, what I do specifically is I just do the, I can say the lazy approach to prepping. I do the uh, the wise buckets, house buckets. Uh, that's pretty much what we have in the house. And then uh, at Sam's Club, you get the 40 bottles of water, Costco for four bucks. That's what. That's generally what I do. Nice trick. Have you shared yet what you do on yours? Hell no, he was no. asleep. Okay, nice trick. Please share with us. What is your philosophy on prepping, man? Yeah. No, it's okay. all good, man. Well, what do you do? I do the same as you, but remember, unlike you people who yeah. are in Tornado Alley, I have something much worse that includes a hell of a lot more water. I live in South Carolina. Guess what we have there? Hurricanes. Well, hurricane action. Yeah. Hurricanes. So, hurricanes, and e even at the same time, sometimes tornadoes. Don't ask me how that works. I I don't know, but I guess it's the, the tornado bringing in the cool air you know, messing with the cold, the hot air and then whatever. Anyways, uh, I do I, I do the lazy the lazy way like you wise food. We even have the five gallon buckets of dried food. Yeah. Whatnot. Okay. Uh, okay. I've got a gas grill, and then I've got a gas camping grill just in case. But the issue is my gas grill has like you know it has the broiler on the left and then it has the stove on the right. Now so I've got that. I, I would like to point out here that you don't have to go buy the specially packaged prepping foods here. You can go buy freaking bags of various soups and noodles and whatnot, and put them in a freaking sealed container at home. Oh yeah, I don't I don't I don't care about brand. I, I get whatever whatever is going to last the longest. So. Yeah, I think that's something too you have to be careful of. I mean, um and something that I didn't really do when I started gathering stuff up is I did basically when you go to the grocery store you buy an extra one of these or an extra one of those. You yeah. know um but you do have to kind of put it into rotation. And that's something that at the time I didn't really think about. And now a lot of my stuff is starting to get a little bit older. That's why I want to move on to something that's non perishable for, I mean, who knows, 20 yeah. years or whatever they, they, they say um, yeah. is yeah. now, you know, a lot of people don't do that. They'll stash it away. And that's kind of what I did, you know, being new into it and not thinking about it. Yeah. I bought a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff stashed away. And now I'm like, Oh shit. This stuff isn't going to be lasting much longer. Yeah. yeah, I've got I've got a ton of fuel in case I need to, you know, break out the generator during a hurricane or well after a hurricane and whatnot. Because I went for like a week or two without power after the hurricane, uh, not too yeah. long ago. So I've got I've got a generator. It doesn't power the entire house. It's only like a fifty five hundred watt, but it'll do my fridge. Some lights, maybe the TV and uh, the air conditioner. That's exactly what I did. Because I've, I've, I've got I've got a window size, unit. Yeah. I've got a window unit air conditioner, so it'll power that, and maybe you know the fridge and the freezer, you know, and lights and TV. Because that's all I need. Because I need I need to be able to get the news. I need to be able to get, you know, my maybe food. Radio. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, the news is it's yeah, easy. Yeah. Built in. Anyways, I, wanna... I need my food and I need my air conditioning. I want to toss out something that a lot of people don't think about when they're prepping and that's, you should buy one of those expensive for what it is. Uh, what the hell are they? Uh, they're freaking multiband radio receiver. Yeah. I've got a couple of those mm -hmm. uh, because you know, you're going to, have more chance of getting honest, legitimate news coverage from browsing through the amateur radio bands and listening to people talking to each other over amateur radio than you may get off of the mainstream news. For example, confiscation bullshit in Katrina. Now, that wasn't on the news for a couple of years after it happened. Yeah, yeah but after watching that and seeing that on TV, um, I also started, you know, even if we're prepping for food, we're also prepping for uh, ammunition and uh, guns. Not particularly because I'm a nut, but particularly because I saw what happened in uh, in New Orleans. And uh, if it ever happens here, uh, I'm not going to get hand over my weapons. I will say, 
leave my property or I will open fire because I'm not, I'm not down with that. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I got to jump in on this whole Narland's thing because I hear people use Katrina as a good example of a lot of things that can go bad, but Katrina is a situation where you bug out. Okay. I'm, I'm for bugging in because I'm somewhere where the worst thing we're going to get is snowstorm or a meteor falling out of the sky. Otherwise there really isn't a whole <laughs> lot where I'm at. I've lived on the coast before. I lived, I used to live near where you are, Night Strike. Okay, I know what hurricanes are like and things like that. We have advanced warning. These people knew a week, a week in advance that there was going to be a hurricane. Yeah. They had lots of time to leave. They refused to leave. They but paid the, the consequences for staying. Okay, so wait, hold up. Here's prepping if you live in Narlands or in that area. One, have homeowner's insurance and make sure it covers floods. Two, have a bug out location to go to, meaning a friend's house further inland, a relative in another state, something like that. Three, have a reliable vehicle that you can put your essentials in there and some family memories that you don't want to lose and keep it full of gas every single day and be ready. Four, pay your cable bill, pay your internet or pay for your cell phone that gives you weather alerts. You've got the weather channel, you've got the weather app, you've got you've got AccuWeather online. The the simple, affordable, common sense things you can do and those are all preps. And the I people agree. the people who want to say that uh, prepping is wacko, does any of that stuff sound wacko? No, it makes common sense. No, no, and it's fi it's fine. I I live far enough inland where if the hurricane comes along, I'm just going to be without power. That's how far inland I, I, I live. So it's not going to affect me as like I'm going to be drown. I'm going to be drowning and whatnot. I'm just going to be without power. So I've got enough food stores and I've got enough fuel stores where I can, you know, sustain myself for at least, uh, I would say at least probably about a month. And, and that's at, all good and fine. But I'm saying if they said this one is going to be a category five for the record books. And even if you're inland, you want to get out of there you know, that sort of thing. But let's just say it wasn't that situation. Let's just say you were closer to the water or you were in a low elevation or you're next to a river or a lake or a creek or a levee or something like that. Okay. If, if I was, I'd be bugging out because you're right. that. Precisely. And that's the difference between a prepper and a victim. And the people that were the victims in Katrina, Katrina I think a lot of them did it to themselves. You're going to tell me they had no clue. No, they knew. They just yeah. weren't prepared. They weren't. You prepared. also have to realize that some some people are either too old or can't afford to bug out. That's when you you your your relatives are there to help you. And if you've got no relatives, I feel bad for you. If you've got no friends, no relatives, no neighbors, no church, no community, I feel bad for you because I got to tell you that if if I lived in an area that was prone to some sort of natural disaster like wildfires or, or hurricanes or something like that, and grandma down the street uh, <laughs> needed to get out, I'm not going to you know load up everybody and the dog and forget grandma. So shame on the people who, who left those. And the ones who say they don't have no money to get out, uh, why haven't you been saving up over the years? Why haven't you been trying? Why haven't you tried to work with somebody who does have a reliable vehicle and a place to stay? And, and you know, a lot of people who say they don't have money, well, gee, you got money to buy a bag of weed. I think you got enough money to buy some water or get your car fixed. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, I'm just, just cold about that stuff. People, you know, people in general waste a lot of money on a lot of a lot of junk food and just a lot of things that they're not putting priorities towards. Yeah, I, after working in a grocery store for a couple of years back in college, you saw that all the time. I mean, people just buy crab. I mean, I, um, real quick, guys, we have a second uh, super chat here. Super chat number two, uh, and Night Strike. This one's actually for you, man. Oh, it says, shit. Can Night Strike get Super Chats yet, or are we still running the subscription drive? Yeah, all 21 of you that are watching right now, get over to Night Strike's channel and uh, sub to his channel so you can watch Hit or Miss and get notifications on it. Yeah, we're still, over on, there, man. Let's we're, we're still only on the subscription thing because I don't have – you have to have 1,000 subscribers for that. Well, so you've only I got 999 more to go. No, I've got, I've got, no, I don't know, got about 459. I've got 479 subscribers. So there you go. So you've gotten 20 over the last couple of days. We're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah. I don't have enough for you super chats. Give, got to give Night Strike a chance, people. Come on. Hey, be be nice to oh, Night Strike. I don't want him to like the the story to come true and him actually get upset and run away and 
Oh, oh, Storm yeah. off. You mean Storm off? <laughs> on his electric you guys. bike? Storm off? Yes, I'll totally do that. On an electric bike. <laughs> I don't even like electric bikes. Hey, I don't even I, have. Hey, I'm just. I'm just glad to hear you and Bob are getting along now. That's just great, man. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> so much, so much animosity between people and gun channels. One, one big happy storm off. He ain't going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that's oh. true. But uh, I, I just want to touch on the prepping thing. Okay. Also, you know, I've got I've got an actual tractor, an old diesel tractor from the 1980s. Uh, it's an old Ford before they stopped uh, making them and they sold the whole division off to uh, what is it? Uh, New Holland. Farmersonly.com so. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, in the eventuality I do have enough fuel for that in case I need to use that where I can't use my vehicles because it's still a method of transportation. Yeah, it's not fast, but the issue is it is a bit more rugged because it's a tractor. It's true. True, and you could use it to pull stuff, tow stuff, haul stuff. I mean, there's a lot of exactly clear out debris if you had to. When the hurricane hit, uh, my driveway was—I have a long driveway. We were cut off from getting outside of our uh, our property because of fallen trees. I had to use that tractor, some a, a tow chain and a chainsaw to move a tree that was that I could not move by my own power. There you go. I know a guy that can recommend some chainsaw gas if you need it. Hey, Seth, small engine fuel. <laughs> I'm t- and you know, another thing, if you're a homeowner and you've got any trees on your property, like for us, very few people maintain the trees on their property. There's branches hanging over power lines. I mean, we have, now I'm not saying go out and cut the branches off the power lines if it's not safe to do so. But if you have any kind of property, you really do need a chainsaw. You have that one branch that blocks your driveway. Like you said, now granted, you have to get it out of the way, but we have so many branches that have fallen on our property. I've had to use it several times to, it, wood is heavy, man. I mean, you try to lift a, a trunk with like a foot diameter. Good luck, man. I mean, you, you, a chainsaw is something else to really consider getting. Um, and I can make a recommendation for gas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that's another good one. Nice, Rick. I got a question for you. You were talking yeah. about not having electricity for about a week or two. What, what was the security setup? Around where there was there was there National Guard patrolling? Were there sheriffs out patrolling the neighborhoods? Did well, you see any of that, or was it just, were you just on your own? See, my house is even though it was a uh, what was it the, the one that came here it was a Category Two. Yeah. Even though it was a Category Two, my house was right at the edge of the evacuation line, so I was right outside the evacuation line, so I didn't have to leave because. We, we, as I said, I'm far enough inland. But the issue is, no, there was no National Guard. There was no nothing, no policing. But the point is, nobody in my area evacuated. Not anyone that lived in my city, they did not evacuate because, you know, it's just like, eh, it happens all the time here. Yeah. You know, the, all, all the local law enforcement were still here. You know, the, the sheriff's department was, you know, full, fully staffed. They, they, they brought in everyone, even their, I guess, their temps or whatever that they use. So they were in full force. So there was no looting or whatever, as, as you normally would see. You only yeah. see looted when it's like it's like a uh, – and, and I'm sorry, Squib. I, 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 I have to make this reference because it this one applies, okay? You only have looting when it becomes like a, a Category 5, like Katrina was, Okay. Where where literally everything is to shit and you cannot you cannot get uh, utilities you can't get power back within uh, you know at least a week or two where you know it, everything is down until they eventually get it back up. Okay, in that situation, yeah, you're gonna have looting because people don't one people are either too cheap to prepare, or yeah. you know they don't want to they don't want to spend the money on it. So they go out and steal stuff and loot because they don't have it, or they're right. criminals and they want they want to you know uh, you want to get a quick score. The thing is that I found so entertaining watching some of the video on Katrina was that these morons were going in and stealing televisions and stuff. Yeah, like, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw. I remember seeing on on uh, like in the French Quarter and stuff. They're showing they were showing people running out with pairs and pairs of uh, shoes because that's good to have when you're about to be flooded out. You know, <laughs> it is unreal. 
Um, nice right question for you or any of you guys. Do you, or do you guys live in areas that are prone to flooding where you'd have to worry about getting a boat, having an inflatable raft or a canoe or anything like that? Is that not? Yeah, is flooding a threat for you guys at all? Uh, Go ahead. A little bit. Have they ever had any? But I see on my property all the way down. Yeah. Uh, I have a small creek. But it never, it, even during the hurricane, it did not overflow because it's that deep in the ground. Okay, but the the, the thing is, uh, there is further back of my property, you know, okay. on the uh, proper, next property over, there is a river, and it did overflow, and it didn't come in. Uh, it didn't. It didn't overflow to the point where it's starting to flood my land, but it did overflow. And ruin other parts of the natural yeah. wildlife and park that they had in the center of town. Yeah, you know, I think we're it's important. That. Go ahead, Tony. I said, where I'm at, I have a creek a uh, hundred feet away from me across the street, and it will flood into my yard. But right at the edge of my yard is a five foot embankment that my house actually sits on. So I've never had anything remotely close to that. You need to take a look at your, uh, you need to take a, everybody needs to take a look at their environment. Like what are some of the uh, landscape around your area, the terrain around your area? Like for us, we, I live about three miles away from the Platte River, which is about a half, half a mile wide. And when you see that thing get up to the banks, it's gotten close to flood stage before. I'd like to think that my house is going to be safe, but we basically live in a, in a, in a, in a river valley. Um, you see a river up to the banks, you're thinking, wow, this, this is a little scary <laughs> when you start to see all that water and you can't see across it. I mean, it's, I've seen it two or three times. And so that almost has me thinking maybe I need like a little inflatable boat or raft or something just because it could, you know, you, flooding you see people on TV on top of their houses. You know, if I lived in an area that I knew could potentially have water up over my roof, then I'm probably going to, uh, have maybe a little more preparations in case I need to evacuate. So. Well, I had a situation uh, during Sandy. Uh, I was I had a pickup truck at the time. Um, the storm was, in my my opinion, was so bad that it was actually like rocking my truck back and forth. And this was this was a '93 F-150 that uh, it was it was no no slouch. It was a full size cab and an eight foot bed, and it was just kind of pushing my truck around. And down the street, it got so bad because it's like right at the end of a little valley that we have. There was a tree that was uprooted and thrown like a good 100 feet down the street. And the tree was probably about like a foot or so uh, in diameter. It was pretty, pretty a decent sized tree. So I, after that, I was just like, all right, yeah, you know what? I'm going to start uh, getting like food and stuff because our power was out for two, two and a half days. And there was people in the, the lower, I guess the lower pay bracket, like your lower end communities that were like just looting everything. And it was only like two days in. It's like, really? I'm busy tending to people complaining about how their power is out. People that are so scared that they didn't have food or anything that they would just call the police and see what they would do. I, and I'm, I back up to those communities. So, and there's like a little stream that runs in between. So I see it as these people do crazy things when they're desperate. Uh, talking about, you know, yeah, I mean that again. It's it's environment. There's so many things to worry about. We got guys. We got a ton of comments uh, coming in on both sides. Over on the YouTube side, um, there's people saying, "Hey, make sure you keep a little bit of cash on hand." Yeah. Uh, you know, think about because because what are you going to do? No electricity. Your 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 debit machines aren't going to work. Your people might small small stores like gas stations may be taking cash only. Keep keep a couple hundred books around for you too. Um, unfortunately, guys, I do have to wrap it up. Um, You've got some stuff that's going to be going on at the house here that I need to help my grandparents with uh, 
cable internet and stuff is coming in. So I'm going to have to let you go. But if you guys are up for it, I'd like to do a part two on this discussion because we got through about half of what I was hoping to cover today, which is not a problem. It's a good problem to have. Well, I wanted to talk about specifically places you can go to uh, get some of your food supplies, prepper supplies, places you recommend. We'll talk about medical. Uh, we'll talk about how to store these different items. Um, again, that was a that was a quick hour, but uh, if you guys are okay with that, if you guys are going to be around, I'll definitely send you all links. And and uh, real quick, we've got a lot of people on the YouTube side that are watching. Just a little shout out to you guys that are over there. We've got uh, Sean Callanan, Callanan's over there, 04 Hemi Car Carrier, Local Gun Nut 803. Say uh, a thank you to Garage Guns for the super chat. And uh, also, where's that guy at? Let's see. Uh, uh, Boost Vallis is over there, the guy that was talking about getting Night Strikes some subs. Uh, Grim was with us earlier, so I want to thank you guys all for watching. And again, hate to be so abrupt about it, but we will definitely do a part two on this topic and and just let people know kind of what you're looking at cost wise to get into a basic food supply for one person, say for 30 days, because I got a couple good websites I can recommend. Um, and then just also just some stuff to take into consideration. You know, I mean, we spend so much, especially I think right before the election, a lot of us were so focused on getting our guns, getting the guns that we wanted because we didn't know what was going to happen that once the election was finished, we're kind of on this post-purchasing high. We kind of forgot about our priorities, which maybe was the prepping supplies. We, we were worried about the Hillary apocalypse. Yeah, we we're too busy scoping out the getting getting that last minute AR or AK that that we just kind of put the whole prepping idea on the back burner, which is you don't want to get complacent in that area either. Um, so I think that's about it. But uh, guys, uh, anything you want to say before you go? Uh, AWAG. Um, just think practically. Like, don't don't buy that thousand um, dollar twenty five year food storage. I mean, it's nice to have, but don't. Don't go overboard with prepping. It does Start expire. Small. Yeah, you're usually with the food, you're guaranteed at least, I know, five years on most of those buckets. Uh, some of the foods, like the dried foods, are usually good for 10 to 20. But again, but you know, the nice thing about that is you can rotate that into your regular food consumption too as you get close to the expiration date. Um, let's see, Midnight Range TM, Travis, you want to say anything before we uh, go ahead and call it? Uh, no, just I appreciate you, uh, you know, the invite. Um, having a blast yeah. doing these these chats with you guys. And um, if you liked, uh, if you thought I did a decent job on the first story time the other night on Never Enough Ammo, I did send them episode two. Oh, so keep an eye on for that. Nice. Go check be, out any yeah, Monday nights. Yeah. And on Gun Channels. Which, which I, I appreciate right. the opportunity to do that. It's, but that's been pretty fun, too. I didn't like oh, I, either of them. I'm getting the short end of the stick this time. <laughs> no, just maybe. You know what, or, man? Maybe this week's gonna be your week. Or, or, or I'm getting. Or, or you know what? Just just to further along the joke, I'm getting the short end of the dress this time. No, it's it's not too short. We wouldn't want you to be embarrassed. Oh, you're gonna, gonna wear a shorter dress. Your, we'll keep your modesty intact. Oh well, thank you. At least at least I can count on that. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport, and, by the way. Uh, and by the way, in this in this podcast, Nice Rick, we're not going to rename you. Okay, I won't go there. No matter what happens, I'm not going to let that happen. So we're gonna we're gonna preserve your dignity, buddy. All right. Oh man, Jonas. So night. No, oh, I just interrupted right. Squib. No, he's gonna say it. Squib <laughs> did it. <laughs> Fuck you, Squib. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. Okay, so Nice Rick, what about you? Any any parting words before we go ahead and call it? Uh, well, yeah, don't miss hit or miss Tuesday nights, nine o'clock where Travis makes a guest appearance every week. Love to show up, man. It's always a good time. Got to get some Smeggy on there too, man. Well, Got to get Smeggy, Smeggy on there too. Uh, from what I hear, Smeggy's been working away from home, so he hasn't been able, he hasn't, he hasn't been near a stable internet connection in a while. If you need a Michigan oh, presence, man. just send me a, a message before the show and I'll jump in, I guess. Yeah, well, if I if I do, you know, if you call me Jonas, don't be surprised if I if Bump I boot you your ass in the middle of the show. <laughs> That's all it takes. Wow, it's it's your house, it's your rules, homie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh man. Well, anyway, thanks for showing up again early morning, you guys. Uh, Squib, what about you, man? Anything you want to say before we call it? Lock and load uh, Monday nights, 11 p.m. Uh, I know that's kind of late. Uh, sometimes I can't make the show or uh, I've got to jump out early. Uh, Monday nights are pretty busy on gun channels. Uh, other than that, uh, I guess thanks for having me. And uh, uh, 
I had to, to step away. I was muted. I had to, uh, are we are we doing another prepping show? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll try for one next Saturday. I, I think I've got the time. I should be around. There's a part two because we really didn't even get into some of the. I mean, I've got more discussion on on uh, how to store things. You know, what do you need to take into consideration? Food, water, where to get, where to source water. I got a whole other section of it. We can definitely cover. People are cool with it. But uh, anything so that pops up, man, any good information that people can use, I think it's I think it's going to be useful to the audience. Uh, some a little subsection might be able to squeeze in there as vehicles, not necessarily uh, just uh, uh, was it uh, the the um, uh, bug out type vehicles, but just uh, prepping within your regular yep. daily driver too. Oh. Yeah, there was a lot of guys that were discussing keeping their cars on full, especially once you get into storm season. Top it off every couple of days, so if you got maximum range, if you need to get out of town and you don't know where you're going to go. Uh, especially for those of us that have trucks or SUVs, you know, you might get 350, 400 miles out of a tank if you're lucky, you know, you might, or 250, you know, it depends on what your vehicle is. So gas is, gas is a big one. Definitely. Uh, Tony, what about you, man? What do you want to say? Uh, any, parting word, any words of wisdom? Uh, when you're thinking about prepping, remember that everybody in your household's got to wipe their backsides. Yep. TP, hey, TP was another part of the chat over there. These guys were kind of debating uh, single ply versus two ply. Uh, for the money, you know, it's hard to beat that single ply from Sam's Club, but everybody likes a little Charmin now and then, right? Yeah, uh, you know, and another thing, you know, talking about the other family members, we didn't discuss medication or how much do you need to stock for other members of the family? What do you do for children? So there's a lot more of a discussion I think we need to get into more detail on. Do so. Yep. And. Don't miss the morning shows on gun channels, and I want to shout out to the guys who are listening on gun channels because they're feeling a little left out with all the YouTube love here. <laughs> well, I wasn't able. Unfortunately, I was afraid to open up two streams because I didn't know if it was going to freeze up my connection. I'm running a really slow DSL connection, so I was kind of like, uh, I don't want to, um, you know, freeze us up or lag or whatever. So I was keeping one side kind of. By, on the, the, back by the way, on, on the super chat, GWebs does not approve. They charge like seventeen to twenty percent for super chats. You know, Patreon's only five. Oh yeah, Patreon so. is always appreciated. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, guys, I want to thank everybody for joining us today over on the Gun Channel side. Thank you guys for joining in. YouTube side, thank you for joining in. Make sure you guys check out GunChannels.com. Sign up if you don't have an account yet. You need to get signed up. It's awesome friends and gun channels than I did in four years of college. I can tell you that right now. So there you go. Uh, greatest thing on the internet. Dude, it's awesome. I love it. It's just odd. There's always something going on. Always somebody you can chat with. It's a great place to go for information. It's it's just it's just cool. It's just an awesome, an awesome place to be. A lot of resources. Oh man, AWAG's driving away. No. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta show off the Supra. I'm sorry, I have to. AWAG Hey, Wag, don't, don't make me go jump out in the Civic, okay? Don't oh make boy. me go jump out in the Civic. Oh, boy. Rice Wars. <laughs> Rice Wars. Rice Wars is on. He said it don't, before I could. Don't, don't make me get the, the Highlander out. Oh, goodness. No, nah, I mean, just for the record, my daily driver's an 01 Cherokee XJ that just turned over 190,000 miles on the way to Grandpa and Grandma. So, you know, I'm, I'm there, man. I'm there. <laughs> I've just got All a right, 2006 guys. Toyota Highlander. If it ain't got a boat, I don't care. No, it's not four-wheel drive. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. I didn't cool, get that man. option. It was too expensive. If it ain't wearing a bow tie, <laughs> I don't want no part of it. Yeah. Four-wheel drive, prepper's choice. There we go. Yeah, depending Definitely. on where you are, I think four-wheel drive is four-wheel drive is a pretty big deal. It is a. It, it can be. I mean, I'm I'm in PA, so you get a lot of snow too, and it's. It's more to maintain, it's expensive to fix, and you have to pay more for it as an option, but it sure is nice having it. Yeah, especially, yeah, yeah Pennsylvania, Michigan, yeah, yeah. you don't have no snow down there in South Carolina night strike, but still. Well, uh, it, it, it has snowed, things. but it, didn't, it doesn't last a day. That's the thing. Yeah, no, I'm talking about real snow. I'm not talking about that dusting that doesn't, yeah, does, yeah that's not real snow. <laughs> but still, it'll get you, you know, through sand, it'll get you through, you know, uh, uh, water uh, to some extent. I mean... It's not necessarily a regular hey, four wheel drive. Ain't meant for forty. What's the matter? But, but uh, four wheel drive <laughs> uh, is another cookie? prepping thing to talk about. Yeah, we, we, you know, Travis is you know, dying to turn us off. So, no, no, no. I was just going to say real quick. Uh, when it comes to vehicles, uh, if you can't take a paved road and you got to take a detour, 
man, go down, go down a gravel road or a country road after rains and see how your car handles it. It's nice to have four wheel drive. It's, <laughs> it, it gets messy quick, man. Especially out here where we've got like one main paved road between towns and that's it. Everything else is cookie. Did I mention my driveway is not paved? And you don't have a four-wheel drive, man. And you don't have a four-wheel drive. Do you drive the tractor down to get the mail at the end of the road? Is that? <laughs> uh, the tractor's a little big for that. I I might that's, use the riding lawnmower for that. Uh, you know, so it's it, yeah. That's what we do. That's how we. You mean roll. you mean when he goes down to the mailbox to get the box from cheaper than dirt? <laughs> Ouch! No, they deliver Ouch. that to the door. Thank Holy you. shit! You better cut this off before blood. Yeah, starts. this is gonna get violent now. Watch Matt jump in. Matt will probably show up here in a few minutes, and then it's and then it's a cage war. Oh no, sprinkles! No sprinkles. All right. Okay, you know guys, I'm gonna go ahead and call it. All right. You know what? Thank you for joining for in today. I'm gonna go get a sprinkled long john from like the store. So fuck you. Oh god, no, no, if, you really, if you really want to, you really hey, if you really want to trigger Matt, is anybody listening? Okay, just get a donut with coconut on it, and then eat that on the camera, and he will. With he sprinkles. will. He'll probably. Travis. No, Travis. Coke, he, no, no, he gets more violent over coconut flakes on donuts. Sprinkles are one. Travis, coconut, the, the, coconut's a whole other world of of of, of hate. So, <laughs> the, like the, week, the couple of days after, the couple of days after the very first donut chat, well, the donut chat incident, whatever. Yeah. And you had brought up coconuts. The next day, a girl brought in some donuts uh, to work, and they were. Chocolate dipped with toasted peanut and coconut on top. I sent him an email. I don't think he, I don't know that he could even stand to open it. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind it. I like the little hint of coconut in the aftertaste. I like coconut too. I like coconut. He likes yeah, it in a piccolata or, you know, but anyway. So, all right, guys, thanks for joining in today. This was Caliber Corner number seven. Jeez. Uh, part one of prepping. And we will try to do a part two next Saturday. So that's it. All right, guys, we will talk to everybody later. All right, see ya. Later. Bye-bye.